quick movie of a 4 by 8 sign. Uh, I've got a bunch of uh, little quotes and stuff that I've been wanting to print, and I'll put them big on these walls. I've got 15-foot ceilings in the shop right now. I don't know. but So this is loading it. Tell it to go. Do you want it to lift up automatically? Yes. I understand. And go. Once it moves away from the home position, I will clamp it. No, I don't need to. I've got it against my indexing jig, and it's being held down here by one clamp. This is just going to be sliding across the surface. This is eighth inch tempered board. It's got a white background on the back that I was I used for a, a big white board. Uh, but this is a ultra. No, this is a regular fine. So it's a one millimeter sharpie. Um, got it programmed at 150 inches per minute and uh, a little piece of Corian um, I forgot what font I'm using it's just a, a kind of a block font but there's not much to watch but again this is a Yeti smart bench working on a 4 by 8 sheet this isn't going to be quite eight, 8 feet tall this way, I think the overall setup. I'm, I've got a building a, drawing a rectangle around it. I think it's six and a half feet or something. I just was scaling it to kind of fit the text. Uh, so you can change out colors. You can put whatever color sharpies you want. Fine, ultra fine. Um, any any number of different variations to it. I'll show you some of the first work that I did with it. So when I first got it, I did uh, I did this with the one millimeter uh, regular half inch shanked uh, standard fine they call it um, sharpie, and this is a font that's got basically three different lines here. Looks good from you know really good from a distance. Then I tried it with a roller ball. This is an R2 roller ball, um, and it took a while for the the ink to get rolling all the time. Um, I did use the pen after it. I came off of here, and it seemed to work okay, uh, but it, it didn't always catch all the all the lines. And then I did an ultra fine one here. And again, for reference, that's that's very small. The same font is here, but ultra fine. And you see a lot of bleed in with the paper where it started and stopped. So a lot of this is just the paper that I was using. Uh, so I played with other fonts. This is technical as a font. You're probably familiar with it. Just a, looks like a drafting font. And I tried it inside the lines because when you blow this thing up, you've got a left and a right side of each letter. And so this was basically pocketing, but I'd, I told it to do a profile cut through V-Carve, but on the inside of the line rather than on the line. Um, and so it narrowed the letters. And then I did it here. It's basically the same size text, but this I did it on the line. So it, you know, because of the bleed and it's a one millimeter pen pass, it doubled the size of the line. So that's basically looks like bold, but you do have some areas where, because it was following the profile of the line, the vectors, it didn't come and catch this. And I didn't have it pocketed. I could have told it to pocket it, and it would have made passes and cleaned it up on the inside. Any number of different ways you can do it, because it's really the same thing. You're just dealing with the vectors of the text or graphics. I mean, you can do whatever. You can import a, a bitmap file and have it trace it and draw it there. So this was, I was just playing with it quick craft paper that we use if we're finishing things uh, and don't want any of the debris or the stain on the, the workbenches. But interesting. So uh, tons of different ways this thing can work, but it's, it's good and quick. And uh, let's just let it work. Okay, so I didn't have it going deep enough. I didn't, hadn't put the rollers, the upper beam on the material, so I did now. Reset it to home. Shouldn't have to change anything. It should be on the exact same line as it's starting with. It is doing the J now, the first letter. And we'll look at that when it passes. Again, for repeatability, it needs to be able to start and stop and do everything again. And it just did it just fine there on the J. And now it's doing the U. I had it running above the material. Um, now I've got the roller wheels on it, 
so it's consistent all the way across. So it, I had it apparently just a little bit closer here than I did on the other side. And there's some slop in the stylus so that it can go up and down and float with the material. Uh, any irregulars, any irregularities with the material, and that's good. Um, but I had it out of the range of tolerance, so we're just going to let it finish this and then get a look at it afterwards. Okay, in restarting it, I did go ahead and um, hook up the airflow to it. Since the pad on the bottom of the dust shoe is rubbing over the text, I think a little air coming over it may help dry it a little quicker so the pad doesn't smear it. It may not smear anyway, uh, but why waste a panel, you know, and time? So I just hooked the four inch dust collector up. See the other videos on how to do that. Uh, it's a good, good setup. So this was programmed at 150 inches per minute and I've just modified the speed, the inches per minute on the console, on the fly, um, up 200%. So again, it's starting and stopping because of all the small text and, and turns, but once it gets moving pretty good, it'll, it'll start clipping along. Uh, so very interesting setup to add to the Yeti SmartBench. Again, I'm Eric Schiller with YetiSmartBench.com. I sell, service, and train smart bench users across the United States. People often ask about repeatability, so that's what we're going to join. So we'll wait till it finishes and moves away. So it's lifting up and moving away. Oops, sorry. I lost it. But you can see that some of the bleed because of the first pass and then the second pass closing. But it's right on the same spot. So it's going to bleed into some of this. But this is just using a Sharpie. Um, and uh, zoom out a little bit. So this is just using a Sharpie. It's finished and it is going home. And the elapsed time on this is... It's cooling down the spindle. I don't have the spindle in it, but so we, I do a 10 second cool down. And the elapsed time on this was... Uh, 16 minutes and 34 seconds. So this is the first one that I did. Sometimes that's got a lot of meaning. Okay, this is the other side of the same sheet. So it's tempered hardboard masonite cover on one side and then it's the slick white type board on the other. Uh, again, this is a standard Yeti smart bench with the new stylus in it and I'm using a Sharpie fine pen which is a, a one millimeter tip basically. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take to dry on this material uh, so I am using the dust collection so it's pulling some air over it so that the, the pads don't grab it and smear it. It may smear, I don't know. It's, that's how we test. I'll know in just a second once it finishes the next set of letters. It looks good, but I think I probably have to drop the, uh, have to clamp it a little tighter. So I'm going to stop it and drop the upper beam. Okay, this is smearing a little bit, so I'm going to slow the speed way down uh, just because on this slick surface it doesn't absorb into the material. We have to rely on the alcohol in the Sharpie ink to dry. So I'm going to get some rubbing alcohol, spray it on this, wipe it right off, and I'm going to run it much slower, again, because of the material. Of course, the other option is to raise the upper spindle, the upper beam up off of the material a little bit so that the, the pads are not rubbing, but I'm going to try it the other way and just let it run slow and simple. Because I want to see if it has time to dry at, say, 75 inches per minute. Okay, so I just used rubbing alcohol and wiped it down. You want to make sure you have plenty of clean papers because you don't want to end up smearing it and just having it a, a, a little light area. So in this case, I slowed it down to 50% of my program to 150 just to see how quick it does dry. I've got some air moving over it from the dust extractor. Um, this may or may not be enough. And again, the other option is to use my Corian risers and lift it up above the, the table a little bit. Uh, but I just want to see. 
it does look like it's doing much better and it's not smearing. Uh, so I may slow it down a little bit more and, and, and let her go. In this video, I'm doing a four by eight sign uh, with the new stylus adapter using, I'm using a Sharpie in it right now. Um, and you'll see, this is eighth inch masonite, hardboard on one side, uh, whiteboard on the other. And you see it's drooping there on the back side. That doesn't matter. I've got it squared to the indexing jig, but when the smart bench travels to it, the lower beam is going to support that and bring it back up perpendicular to the spindle. So it'll be nice and flat and perpendicular to the spindle so everything would work if we were using a router bit in it. Right now we're just using a, a Sharpie pen in this particular example, but this is a, a good example of seeing that uh, the way the machine is set up, it self flattens thin materials as you're bringing it out. So if I was using this as a spoil board, I'd usually have a quarter inch material as my spoil board so it's heavy enough to hold a cabinet side. If I cut cabinet parts out of this, I may have uh, two cabinet sides at the, at the start of the nest. Um, so I want the material to be thick enough to hold that, those pieces up once I finish cutting them, whether I'm using an onion skin cutting technique or I'm, you know, however I'm doing it, it doesn't matter. Um, or I'm using tabs, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I want the spoil board to be strong enough to support everything. So uh, this is just knocking things out. I did slow it down significantly. Um, it's programmed at 150 inches per minute using a Sharpie on the slick side of the masonite. Um, but I slowed it down to 50%. The upper beam is on top of it, uh, and I didn't want the pads to rub the wet ink, so this gives it time to dry before the pads hit it. Um, the other option is, of course, to use Corian risers and raise the uh, upper bar, an eighth of an inch, quarter inch, whatever you want, uh, and set it that way. Now, the Corian risers are something that I came up with in 2019. I think I first put them on the web in 2020, early 2020. Um, but what they do is they stabilize the upper beam across different heights, however high you want to set these Corian uh, risers. Um, it is something that you should design yourself and practice using tooling allowances and getting the, type, the, the, the fit just right, because it has to be snug in how it fits down on the lower beam. Uh, but you, you can get the concept in my videos. Um, they're there to teach, but I do want users to, to learn how to do tooling allowances and stuff like that. It makes better sense for you to uh, continue to learn whatever software you're using. Okay, because I'm not the kind of guy to leave well enough alone, I pulled the air off of the uh, Z head and it did smear. So with the air on, it doesn't, but with, with it off, it did. So I'm gonna clean that letter out and just reprint that one letter. Okay, so that's a quick video on the Yeti SmartBench new stylus product. It should be released in April or May 2021. Please don't hesitate to call or email. If you want to get in touch with me, you can fill out the contact form at www.yetismartbench.com. Thanks for watching.